Hey, what's up, guys? Back again with another video in the Java series. This time, I'm going to teach you about array lists. I know people that said I would never make it here. I know people talking think that I don't over here. I know people that be fake was the puppeteer. I know God with me though, so I don't ever fear. I know people that said I would never make it here. I know people. All right, guys. So we're going to be moving on to the collections interface now, which is basically another part of the Java API, the Java library. And it's a bunch of stuff that allows you to store data. Basically, it's a bunch of like special little um, objects and classes and stuff that let you um, store collections. Basically, that's what they're called. They all they all extend the collections uh, class, and so it's it's very powerful for storing data and stuff like that. Okay, so let's just jump right into it because the first one is going to be an array list. Okay, and the array list is basically an array, but way better. Okay. And if you remember, an array is only able to store a certain amount of elements once you specify how many elements it can store, right? Because if you create an empty array, you have to specify how many elements are you're gonna, you know, reserve uh, for that array, right? You have to choose how many. But in an array list, you, it doesn't matter how many, um, you know, sp slots you choose in your array, right? Or array list, um, you can, you know, resize your array. You can do whatever you want. You can, um, you can reallocate the space you need for that array. So basically. If you remember um, a couple episodes ago when we did the string and the string buffer, the string buffer is able to be resized, right? But the string cannot be resized without reallocation. But in this case, the array list can be resized, but the array cannot be resized. So the array list is way better. And also with the array list, you can also use pretty much any data type. It's basically a way to store objects in this case, okay? So array lists are generic. So let me just go ahead and show you, right? So we can open it up uh, or we can create a new array list object. So array list. And as you can see here, it has a, a generic thing right here. So we have to provide a data type of some sort, right? And so whenever you're working with an array list, you're going to want to store some objects. So they cannot be primitive types, but if you do want to store primitive types for some reason, you simply need to do their wrapper or whatever you might call it, the, uh, the actual you know class. Instead of int, you would do integer, right? That would actually work. You could do that if you want to. So in this case, I'm going to store strings, OK? But well, you can literally use any object that you want to store inside of here, or just string actually, because you know it's a single thing. Got to import array list by the way, because it's from the utilities uh, collection. I mean, not collection, uh, package, right? So we just created a new array list with the data type of string, right? So that means that it's going to be storing a bunch of string objects, right? So now we can give it a name. I'll just call it list, and list is equal to new array list. Okay, we have to create it like we would create a normal object. And so you're going to need some parameters here. Well, actually, you don't need parameters. If you do Control P, you can see that one of the options is no parameters. And what that is going to do is create an empty array list, right? That's pretty much it. That's all it's going to do. But if you want to, you can provide some parameters, OK? And so one of the other parameters is going to be a collection. If you want to provide a collection to go inside of this array list, you can do that. But we're going to keep it simple. We're not going to do that quite yet. So the other thing that you can provide is going to be a initial capacity, which is basically the same thing as a you know a string buffer. We can provide the capacity of the of the string buffer, but in this case um, it's an array list, right? So we can provide the initial capacity of the uh, of the array list, meaning we could reserve a certain amount of space for the array list, right? Because if you think about it, if we know ahead of time that we want to store four elements inside of our array list at some point, right? Let's go ahead and save sp uh, four spots, right? And then if it ever goes above four, you know, above the capacity that we have chosen, then it's simply going to be reallocated, right? So basically, we want to pre-allocate some space for our capacity so that we don't have to be reallocating space every time we, you know, change the size of the array list, right? So sometimes you might want to put some space in there, okay? And so you, go, so you can choose four if you want to. So that will make an array list with four slots of capacity, okay? So that will be basically the same thing as making an array with, you know, four elements of size, right? So yeah, so that's going to do that for you. So if you want to do that, you can go ahead and do that. And so if you want to see the size of your array list, you can actually do that. So if you output the size of this, we can do a list dot size. And so if you print this out, let's see what we get. Ignore this. That's from something else. So yeah, we get zero, right? So it's not going to count the capacity, even though the capacity might be four, meaning it could fit four um, objects inside this array list without re reallocation. It still does not have any objects inside of it yet, right? So that might, that's why it says zero. Okay. So if you want to start adding objects to our array list, we can start doing that. So we can do list dot add. And this is how you add objects. So of course it says string as a parameter because it's generic, right? So it knows exactly what data type you're going to be working with. So we need to provide some strings, right? So I'm just going to provide a string here. I'll call it vehicle. So that will be the first string I want to provide. I can add some more strings. Uh, or oops, list dot add. We'll say dolphin. So we'll add a dolphin. Let's keep adding some stuff. List dot add. Jordan Peterson. Oops. There we go. Jordan Peterson. Okay, booty, 
Okay. Oh my gosh. Okay, I can't type. Anyway, so that's going to add all of that, right? So we can actually print this out if we want to, so we can see the, you know, what objects we have stored inside of our array list. So we can just print out the array list variable, right? So let's go ahead and do that, or object in this case, I guess. Same thing, really. And so yeah, we get vehicle, dolphin, Jordan Peterson, and booty, right? Because that's the objects that we stored inside of the array list. So we can also add objects by their index, right? So we can choose what index we want to insert the object into, right? So let's say, um, well, currently the first index is going to be holding the word dolphin, right? But let's say we want to put something else in the first index, right? So we can do that by doing list.add, and we can provide the first parameter will be the index at which you want to store it. So one in this case, of course. And so now will be the thing that you want to store in that place. So we'll just say new dolphin. And so let's print this out and see what we got, or run this and see what we got, right? So it's running, and now we see that it says vehicle, new dolphin, then dolphin. So what it did, it didn't replace dolphin, but instead it put new dolphin, you know, the thing we put in here, inside of the dolphin one slot, the one index, and then move dolphin to the side, right? So it's not going to replace anything, it's just going to move it to the side, and then insert, you know, the thing that you just want to put in there. So that's pretty cool, right? So that's how you add some stuff like that. And uh, yeah, so as you can see here, basically we can do a bunch of methods that come along with the ArrayList object, right? So of course we can see the size of it now, which is fine. So we can see how many objects we have stored inside of our ArrayList. And it should be about five, right? Yep, we get five right there, so that works. So that means we have five um, objects stored inside of our ArrayList. And of course, since our initial capacity was four, whenever we went to five, that means the ArrayList had to be reallocated behind the scenes. But we don't have to worry about that. That's really just about memory management and stuff like that. So anyway, that's what that did. So let's say you want to remove a, you know, remove one of the strings from the array list, right? We can actually do that by doing list dot remove, okay? So there's two things we can do. We can either remove it by its index or by the actual object itself, okay? So let's say we want to remove the word vehicle, right? We can actually do that just pro by providing vehicle. Pretty cool. So now we can do that. So we'll run this here. And oh wait, we forgot to print out the value. So we remove vehicle. So let's print out the new value of our array list, of course. So we can test and see if it was actually removed. And now, as you can see here, it says new dolphin instead of vehicle as the first one, right? Because vehicle was removed, right? And like I said, we could also provide the index. I'm pretty sure I said that, but yeah, we can provide the index at which we want to remove something. So let's say we want to remove uh, Jordan Peterson, right? So that means it'd be vehicle uh, 0, 1, 2, 3. That should be the right one. So if we remove the third index, that should remove Jordan Peterson. So let's test that out. And yeah, Jordan Peterson is gone now, right? Because we removed the third index. And so that's what that does. So it's pretty cool. So that's how you add and remove stuff. It's a pretty simple process, but that's how you do it. And so one other little cool method that you might want to use is actually called trim to size. So let's say that the capacity of your array list is bigger than the actual amount of objects that you have inside of your array list, right? So the capacity is bigger than the size. If for some reason you want to make your capacity equal to the amount of objects that you have stored inside of your array or list um, equal you know, to the size, then you could actually do a method for that. So list dot trim to size. And like I said, what that's going to do is set your capacity equal to the amount of objects you have stored inside of your array list. Okay. So now we can test out. So now that's what that's going to do. So if we run this, it's still going to work perfectly fine. Nothing's going to change except that the capacity is going to be equal to the size now, right? Pretty cool. That's what that's going to do. And really that's it for using, you know, array list, right? But there's one more thing I want to show you is actually how to convert an array list to a regular array because sometimes you might want to have an array instead of an array list for some reason, so you could convert the array list to an array. Or sometimes you might be calling upon a method that only accepts arrays but not array lists, right? So you might want to convert it to an array just for, you know, whatever you're trying to do, right? So we can do that. So let's go ahead and get, uh, get rid of this, and we're going to create a new array list. So array list. But in this case, we're going to do a different data type. Keep in mind, an ArrayList can use any object, right? So we can provide anything. We can use double integer string, even objects that are part of an API that you might be using, um, anything like that. Even objects that you might be creating, right? You can create your own objects and put them in here, right? You can store whatever you want, right? So in this case, since we're not creating any uh, extra objects for ourselves, we're just going to use one that we already know. So we're just going to uh, store some doubles, right? So double, so we're going to be storing an ArrayList of multiple double objects. Um, so double, we'll call it double array list. So, so uh, double al is equal to new array lists. Okay, so that's going to store an array list of doubles, right? And of course, we can provide the initial capacity, but we're just going to leave it how it is. And so now let's add some stuff to our double array list. So double al dot uh, add, and we're going to add some double values here. So 2.4. Oops, that's a string. 2.4 double al add um, 4.0. Double AL add 
there we go so just some random stuff like that so that's our double array list and we could add all that stuff to it but now let's say we want to convert it to an, a regular array right we can actually do that with a method but first we need to make an array to store the array list inside of of course so we're going to make an array so double um doubles we'll just call it doubles is an array that's an array of course a regular array and so that's going to be equal to new double and of course if you remember whenever you're making an array you have to give it an initial capacity or initial size i mean because you know uh, that's just how arrays work you can't you know change the size of an array after you make it so basically let's just set the size of this array to the size of our array list right because our array list is going to convert all those objects into elements for our array right so we're just going to get the size of our array list like this and then now that's going to be how many spaces we've reserved for our regular array okay so now that we've made the array that we just want to store our array list inside of we can now convert it right so we'll do double doubles i mean is equal to and then we can do double al which is our array list oops uh dot to array so that's going to convert it to an array but if you um, hover over this we can see that we have incompatible types on the right side we have an object so that means that this um, method here just returned an object but on the left side of course we have the double array um, so basically what we need to do is provide inside of here as a parameter which array we want to store the value of this array list inside of okay so we can simply plug doubles in just like this okay so that I'll, so now that tells it what data type you want to store inside of this array list here array I mean so we actually don't even need to do this because we just told it where to store it so there we go okay so that's what that's going to do so now if we want to test it out see if it works let's just let's just go ahead and print out the value of this array here so uh, int i is equal to zero i is less than doubles dot length there we go i plus plus and then now we can just print out each one so south doubles um, i okay so that should print out each one let's try that out let's see what we get and as you can see here all the values of the array list was successfully added to our array and then printed out right so that's pretty much how you make an array list and then also how you convert an array list to a regular array in case you ever need to do that it's pretty simple I and mean, just keep in mind that the main difference between an array and an array list is that an array list can be resized but a regular array cannot be resized okay so that's pretty cool um, if you have any questions about what I showed you if I went too fast you can ask a question in the comment section below I'll be glad to help you or we have a Discord link in the description for you also in case you want to join our Discord, hang out with us, anything you want to do, go ahead and do that. But also we have a um, link to all of the code from today's episode in the description, so make sure you check it out here. So that will be pretty cool. Um, so yeah, make sure you do that. And uh, yeah, so if you like this video, leave a like if you want to see more, subscribe, and peace.